I have taught my computer to play 3D Pong. Let's see how I did it. First off, 3D Pong. You for sure have heard of Pong as one of those first games ever created and, and it being one of the pillars gaming world stands on. And it's absolutely so and we will be writing a program to beat Pong in one of the future videos, but in this video we will be playing slightly different game, sorry. And the main reason for that is that the classic Pong turned out to be quite a challenging game to write a program for. Talk about misleading appearances. So it's a 3D Pong this time. The version I am playing can be found at www.ponggame.org, a website that has flash-based versions of Pong and several spin-offs like the 3D one we'll be playing. Feel free to visit and play, it's a great experience, either educational or blast of the past kind of one, depending on how long you've been around playing video games. A few words about why I have chosen this particular game. Well, I want to be honest here, uh, this was literally my third program written in Python, and that including Hello World. So I was trying to pick my battles rather carefully, to bite what I can chew, to pick something my own size, and to punch my weight, so to speak. Okay, so a few words about the game itself. So the game itself states its name on the title screen, Curveball, and now you can see me, a human, playing this game. And it's an unorthodox take on a classic Pong, where you are viewing the whole ball and racket scene from a sideways angle, kind of, right? Which adds a whole new dimension to the gaming setup, hence 3D in the game's title. Frankly speaking, if anything, this makes a game a bit easier, or at least more straightforward. You see the ball, you hit the ball. That's the major strategy I am adopting while playing. The game is broken down into levels, with uh, each level you need to score 4 points, and the speed picks up a little bit with each level. Quite straightforward, see? As a human, I could manage to get to a level 3 or 4 most of the time, by which time I puny human reflexes become inadequately slow for, for the speed the ball flies at, and I would lose. So let's see if we can write a program that can do better than that. So the approach I took trying to teach my computer to play the game was same as my human strategy, stunningly uncomplex. So you see the ball, you hit the ball. So this is the logic I'm trying to implement here in its entirety. But before we do that, let's find the game on the screen. So we, we're taking a screenshot, we're searching for a black square 10 by 10 pixels. So we rotate the screenshot 180 degrees and we'll do it again. And here we go. Here's the region. Here's the canvas for our programming masterpiece. Side note, obviously this method is like far from ideal. It will fail anytime you have anything else pure black on the screen. But I'd say that should be good enough for now. Next, again, what our plan here is, so one, take the screenshot, two, find the ball on, on the screenshot, three, move the mouse where the ball is, rinse and repeat. Let's locate the ball. Good news is the ball is rather distinct compared to the rest of the game, it's bright and big and we should have no issue locating it. There's a bright patch right where the center of the ball is and if you probe what color it is in a graphic editor, it's just bright white color, the F, 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 F color. The thing to take into consideration is you don't want to check all the pixels in a screenshot. Even the game area we are looking at contains roughly about 400,000 pixels and those pixels would translate into milliseconds of processing time awfully fast. So if you cycle through every pixel of it, the frame rate drops to around one or two frames per second. That's it's essentially a medium to fast paced slideshow rather than a video game. So, and it leaves our computer program no chance at all. So what we can do is to check every say fifth pixel in each direction. Thus we only have 1 25th of pixels to look at. When a white pixel is found, look one step to the right and one step down too, just to make sure it's a ball. The next part is taking screenshots is supposed to be easy, right? So. 
there's a standard Python library for everyone to use. It's called PyAutoGUI for dealing with things like keyboard, mouse, screen. Functions are simple and straightforward. And it's a great module to use with one tiny little problem. It takes about 50 to 100 milliseconds to take a screenshot. And if you add time you need to process the image, it results in effectively like six to eight frames per second FPS of your game, which is great if you play a game based on logic. And it's not so great if it's a game about reaction and speed. So it, 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 is, it isn't super terrible though. It, it does hit the ball quite successfully up until speeds started to pick up. So it's gotten to a level two, so it's slightly worse than a human player. But obviously something has to be done about those screenshots. After researching for a while, I found that indeed, I by no means am the first one to have this kind of problem. And when enough people have the same problem, there will be someone who comes up with a solution. And indeed there is. There's a Python library called MSS, which stands for multiple screenshots. And it was developed exactly with this task in mind. That is, take fast screenshots. And it is used in a similar project as this one, albeit more serious and maybe more cool. The installation and syntax is somewhat more complex than that of a PyAuto GUI, but but the examples on the library website makes working with it possible, even if you are as lost as I was. And that's about it. Result, getting to the level six or even seven or even eight. It loses eventually when the speed picks up, but definitely does better than I, a human, could do. And that's the success in my book. The link to my massive source code is in the description. Feel free to play with it if you like. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, click the subscribe button. More programs playing computer games are coming. Among those, we'll have Classic Pong, which is actually way more challenging than this 3D Pong version, and another piece of eternal classic, the Minesweeper. So, see you in the next videos. Bye.